Hey everybody and welcome to our MPC webinar about careers in production. I'm joined by Siobhan and Liv. Hi. Who are two of our senior managers in the um, production here team here in London. What we're going to do is run through a presentation about um, careers in production and some of the opportunities available, the shows that we're working on, Siobhan's going to run through that. And then if you have any questions, um, feel free to um, type those in and, and send them to us. And um, I'm just going to do a bit of screen sharing now, and hopefully you guys will be able to see the presentation. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to pass over to Siobhan, who's going to run through the slides and just tell you a little bit about production at an MPC. Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm Siobhan, I'm Head of Production here in London, and this is Liv, who's our Central Production Manager. So we've got a few slides just to talk through a various array of things at NPC, not just to do with production, but also how we are as a company. So I'll just start running through some of these. Oh. There we go. Yes. There we go. So just starting with a little bit about us, for any of those of you guys out there who haven't necessarily heard about NPC before or seen what we do. We are a world-leading VFX facility, and we are a global company as well. We've got uh, film VFX studios in Vancouver, Montreal, Bangalore, and also LA. In uh, 2016, we delivered 28 shows, and fun fact, that was more than any other studio delivered last year. So a huge amount of work comes through here, which is hugely exciting. And in 2017 as well, earlier this year, we won both the Oscar and the BAFTA for Best Visual Effects for our work on Jungle Book, which was amazing. And um, currently in London for 2018, we are working on Lion King, Dumbo, and potentially some more shows as well coming through too. As you can see here, there's a few shows that we are delivering at the moment, and some that we're getting started on as well. Uh, some of these shows are being looked after by our global teams. Um, for example, Nutcrackers out in Montreal, Justice League is wrapping up at the moment out in Vancouver. So um, it shows that we are on track again this year to deliver a huge amount of work, um, not only film-wise, but also the effects shot count-wise, and some really exciting projects there as well. So about production here, we are currently a team of 50, which is quite small for us. Um, at our peak, we usually hit around 90 plus members in production. Um, like I said, myself, the head of production, responsible for the London production team, with Liv, uh, responsible for runners, PAs, and cords. And then we work very closely together to ensure that we cast teams um, correctly in terms of skill level, personality level, and also who you'll be working with supervisor-wise and also lead-wise and artist-wise, because it's very important for us that all of our teams are harmoniously working together and um, that we have good skill sets across the board as well. So um, this is a brief overview of the pipeline. For anyone who's not seen the VFX pipeline before, it is a wonderful beast, let's call it that. <laughs> um, there's multiple cogs that build up our pipeline, and um, because we are departmentalized, which we'll go into a little bit more info in later, um, it means that we have certain departments specifically looking after these disciplines. Um, and depending on the show, depending on the work, and depending on time as well, um, the way we go through each department can vary. So I think it makes for a really interesting and varied role because it means that you're not always necessarily going through the same approach on every single project. You might have something that's more CG heavy or more 2D heavy or effects heavy or anim, for example, and that will ultimately change how the pipeline looks. As much as it's structured here, it usually ends up looking like a piece of spaghetti. Um, but it's very much good to be aware of the different departments and also what leads into what. Because when you're in production, your responsibility is making sure work is delivered through the pipeline. Um, whether there's a department that's stuck waiting on someone else or a department that can't deliver because they've got software issues, for example, it's important that everyone in production, whether you're show or department side, to be very aware and understanding of what the pipeline is because it's important to know what departments are dependent on each other and ensuring that the work goes the right way in a good, timely manner as well. 
So Department of Affairs' show, as I briefly mentioned, so at NBC, coordinators are split across shows and departments. As I say, we are departmentalised. So within London, we have departments specifically for different disciplines. Um, if you are a department coordinator, day to day, you will find yourself more artist focused, uh, focusing on a single discipline. You might be on one show or a couple of shows and you work very closely with the artist, scheduling each individual task and working with them to ensure that they know what to do day to day and then you report into the show to keep them updated with schedules and what's going on. If you are a show coordinator, you're more client focused, you will be on one show and you will be probably across the global pipeline. Um, you won't have as much detail as a department coordinator, necessarily um, much as much technological info either because you're not focused on one discipline. But show coords will keep all those plates spinning. They will work with all the different uh, departments to ensure work's going through nice and quickly and helping strategize as well. So shows kind of bring what's happening client side and what the show schedule needs. And then departments can supplement that with the reality of what the department can deliver and uh, any efficiencies we need to look into. So one thing I wanted to mention too, in London we have our assets team here. So we are the only site out of all of uh, MPC that has the assets team in London. It's centralised here, but it works globally. So um, within our assets team, we work on every single show at MPC. So when you think back to the earlier slide of all the different shows that are happening, all of those run through assets. Um, it's a dynamic team split into five separate disciplines. So you've got modelling, texturing, look, dev, rigging and group. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, you've got a chance to work on projects with show teams out in Vancouver, Montreal as well. So it's really, really nice because you do see that instant NPC global aspect um, and you get to know show teams and producers out in different sites as well. Um, I started off in assets. We'll share a little bit about ourselves later. Um, Liv's been in assets as well. It's very dear to our hearts um, and it's a fantastic team because... So much happens there, it's so exciting and dynamic, and you also get to work closely with our Bank on All Assets team as well, which is a big team, a lot of work goes through there, and it's great because it gives you, like I say, that global overview, but then it also allows you to meet lots of people globally too, not just within the London office, but also within all the different sites. Um, so it's nice to build up all those connections as you walk into MPC. So in terms of career progression, um, there are lots of opportunities here at NPC. We are an agile company. Um, we are always working hard to ensure that the people we bring into the team have an agile approach as well. Um, because in VFX, things can change very quickly. Clients can change their minds. Deadlines can shift. New work comes in. Trailers, for example. So it's important to ensure that everyone is able to bounce back when all those wonderful changes happen. Um, but also because we are a big team and we have so much work and because of the split with show and department, it means that we do have lots of opportunity here in production. Um, Liv and myself are always working together to plan new shows and teams. And as I mentioned earlier, we work very hard to ensure each person is matched with a team where personalities will gel. It's important for us to ensure that not only are you learning and growing as an individual, but that also you're working with people that you enjoy working with too and you get along with, it's important for us that that also happens. So uh, we work very hard and try to get that right as much as possible. <laughs> um, alongside that, we ensure you're given opportunities to learn and push your skills and grow as an individual as well. We are really passionate about career progression here. Uh, we've both been very lucky to experience great career progression here at NPC and we want to ensure that everyone within our teams is very much aware of that too and knows the opportunities open to them. So a bit more about career progression, we have a runner team here at MPC and I wanted to mention it because it's slightly different to other VFX studios. If you've seen runner, runner teams at other studios in London, um, you might know that the team usually is more focused towards either the artist role or more ad hoc roles. At the moment we have a team of six dedicated runners um, at any one time for film MPC London and they are brought on to eventually join the white production team. So uh, Liv and our facilities manager will meet with any potential runners, um, just talk about how the runner role works, but also finding out that people are interested in a career long term in production. It's a good route in for anyone, either if they're coming out from school or coming out from university, for example, and they want to get 
exposure to how we work as a company, um, but also how we are structured too. Um, I know sometimes joining in as a PA can be quite daunting because uh, it's a big company and there's so many people. So it's nice that our runner team kind of get to know everyone first and they can use those connections once they've uh, been put into production roles, which is good. Um, do you want to talk about some of the shadowing that you work with? Yeah, so um, while the runners are um, sort of getting familiar with um, their runner duties, once they sort of master that, we start putting them into uh, departments and shows to get a bit of a taste of what production can be like. Uh, so that's a really exciting opportunity because you get to actually experience uh, lots of different varieties of um, the pipeline, parts of the pipeline. So um, you might have a stint in animation or in layout or on uh, any shows that we've got going as well. And that's just to make sure that when the runners, or when you finish, um, sorry, as you uh, progress through, that you have that um, experience to fall back on. So uh, we really like to have that, um, I sort of facilitate that with them and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good for us because we can kind of give that exposure quite early on. Um, I know sometimes other runner positions can be quite broad. Um, I know we focus it down, but it's because we want to make sure, as Liz say, you get the exposure and the chance. We want to make sure that when you're stepping into a role, you also feel confident doing the role. Um, and you and get the, the context. Because exactly. I think context is really important so that you know um, you might have a particular affinity with CG or 2D or... Um, you get to start to form those relationships with different PAs or different coordinators, um, and more than anything, you get familiar with the building as well. So, um, uh, which, which is a big, which is a big part of it as well. It's a big building, uh, lots of different floors. Uh, so, I think having that context before you step into um, the other roles is super important. And um, then, what we do is obviously we do the shadowing, um, as we kind of showed you the slide with the pipeline. It is a wonderful VC pipeline of many different departments and routes. So it's important that you, that you spend the time as well as a runner to understand the pipeline and know what works because then you need to, when you move into a PA role potentially, know the right people to talk to about different departments and things that might come up. Um, we do temporary transfers as well. That's a chance to step into a PA role or a show or a department, see if it's a good fit with the team and all going well. Then next steps are official PA and then hopefully down the line from that coordinator, manager, and the rest of the world. Hmm. So next thing is global team. So as I mentioned, obviously, assets of the global team within London, and we have uh, studios in other sites. Um, but in terms of progression, there isn't just progression within the London team. We also actively transfer between our Canadian sites, which I think is brilliant. Liv, for example, came over from Vancouver, <laughs> so it definitely works. <laughs> um, sometimes there are obviously level and salary restrictions for visas, however it does open up more opportunities for progression. For example, um, recently we had a show manager that was promoted in London and then moved across to Vancouver for a show. Um, so it, it's, I, I, as a head of production, work very closely with the head of productions globally to share talent. Um, I've kind of been speaking to a couple of Montreal and Vancouver coordinators. Um, that might come over on their own visas and manager levels we might be able to sponsor. So there are opportunities and I think it's really nice to be able to look at those because if you're interested in working in a different site, um, if maybe if you're just going for a year or something as well, sometimes that can be possible. Um, but it's great to know that you have career progression globally and say for example you're looking for a next step and that might not be in London, we can work and see whether there's an opportunity to take that next step in one of our sister sites in Montreal or Vancouver. So in terms of training, we are not just passionate about uh, your career, we're also passionate about training. So here at NPC, we have lots of different ways to get everyone engaged with training. Uh, most recently, it's NPC University. It's a learning management system where courses have been written, um, so you can interact and learn all the different aspects, not just of how we as production work, it might be how to uh, use Excel, how to manage supervisors, how to deal with pressure, how to delegate. Um, we want to make sure that we're working on all the different skills, not just the effect pipeline skills, but also soft skills that you need to encounter day to day. Managing pressure internally, for example, or how to work with different types of people. Uh, NPC University has all these different courses that are being put together, 
and they've also got quizzes on them as well. So it's not just a case if you're just sat there watching a video or sat there reading material. It's interactive, you can track your progress, you can see what your score is um, at the end of the quiz. And then Liv and I can also use this for your development as well. We can kind of see what courses you have done, what courses you might not have done, but it'd be good for you to take. If you want. Um, and it also just means that you can see lots of different training material as well and, and get really involved in how we work here. Um, myself and Liv and also our team put together production schools. Um, if any of our, if anyone in our team actually has something that they really want to share or explain better to people or talk about, we will always put production schools together. We might go through tips and tricks on our scheduling software. We might talk about syncing. We might talk about the render farm. Um, anything where someone thinks they could benefit from a bit more training or exposure, then we always look to put those classes together, not just held by ourselves, but like I say, also held by any specialists in the team that want to share any of the information they know. Um, we also have a training manager coming on board, which is really exciting. Um, it just means that they will join the central team and help support with training as well, um, because it is a big old pipeline and we're very much aware of that. And we do often have people um, join the company that haven't worked in VFX before. That's not a problem. We don't necessarily just look for people that have only ever worked in VFX and have that experience. A lot of what Liv and I do look for is more soft skills in terms of how you work with others, manage pressure, how organized you are, your attitude to certain um, tasks, for example, and then we ensure that once you do join NPC, you have the right training available. So you can then learn the pipeline and see all of those wonderful things. Which other industries might people join from? Well, because I'm sure there's um, a lot of people who may be watching you, maybe on yeah, the it's, it's We've had people from Disney, from CNN, We've had people from advertising companies, so that, yeah, TV, advertising, um, sometimes something completely different as well, like, Bank. yeah, yeah. from banking, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so is, is it yeah. much about the soft skills, it is, it's about learning the pipeline, knowing the pipeline, yeah, and about I, the effect, so you can train people quite quickly. Exactly. I, I think it's important to have a passion for the effects. I think it, it's a tough industry at times, especially when you're on a show that's delivering. It's not always easy. So it's important to be passionate about what we do, for sure. But at the same time, with all these great tools, we can teach you in depth about the pipeline. It's also somebody who is used to working with people, who's able to manage pressure themselves, but also with other individuals. Somebody who has experienced scheduling before. Sometimes we find people with kind of admin backgrounds where they've managed calendars for people before and had to deal with booking equipment or globally as well, because we are obviously a global team people who've worked with sites that are remote or um, in different time zones as well. Um, so you've got exposure just having to try and get hold of people when it's really difficult. Um, I think those soft skills are, are very important. And as well, it's, it's personality, I'd say, as well. Um, when you're leading a daily session, for example, when you're sitting there with a the lead trying to get work approved, it's important as well just to be kind of a presence in the room, understand that it's, it's your responsibility to be leading it as well and pushing work through as well. Um, when sometimes other people in the room might not want to. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I think background-wise, it, it's been quite wide recently. Um, we definitely don't just look for people with experience in VFX. It's, it's definitely looking for those soft skills, and then we supplement it with training. Um, and, yeah, in, with all this training and, and with the planning that Liv and I put together, we definitely invest in our teams and also expect our teams to invest back and look for a career here at NPC because there are so many opportunities and chances to grow and expand that it's important that we have teams that are passionate about that too because you can have fantastic careers here and we have examples of people that have them um, and we just want that passion to share with the team as well. So about me, um, I started off um, going to Bournemouth University I initially did a course in computer animation and visualization because I thought that's what I had to do, in all honesty. Uh, when I was at uh, sixth form trying to get into uni and trying to say what this world was, uh, nobody really knew. So um, I thought I had to kind of go down the very artistic, technical route, and turns out it was really difficult and didn't suit me. So I managed a year, and then after that year, I knew I had to change courses and went into interactive media production. Um, and that was a more broad degree uh, where I did kind of a bit of editing, a bit of um, coding, all different types of things, um, just as a rounded degree. And then after that, I did a master's in producing, 
ultimately because I thought it would give me a job, which it did not. Um, <laughs> more it showed me that I didn't want to be on set, in all honesty. Um, and it also showed that I had kind of more of an efficiency for managing teams and uh, looking at the structure of things and supporting the more technical side as opposed to actually doing it myself. Um, so after much persevering after university and a couple of different career changes, I then got my first uh, role in the effects over at Framestore, actually in their Bournemouth Outpost facility. I was there for about a year and a half before transferring to London, um, where I worked on Jupiter Ascending, um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Dracula, to name a couple of things. I was there for about a year and a half again, um, and then I spoke with the head of production at the time here in London about a role at NPC. Um, I was offered a role as the rigging and groom department manager, and then um, after that I was moved across into the modeling and texturing department manager role. Um, then I'd say post that, it was I think 2015 I moved into the central production manager role, and then last year moved into the head of production role, and then July this time I would have been here for about three years. And then about you, Liv. Let's just go oh, um, sorry. So, so um, I'm from New Zealand originally, and I once I finished uni, I went to AUT, and once I graduated, I spent a year sort of saving up and figuring out what I wanted to do with my life, and that involved moving to Vancouver. So um, I packed my bags and went and started networking, and so that took a, took a few months to really. Um, get my feelers out there, talk to the right people, I wanted to understand what it was that I was getting into. So I, met, I got to meet a few artists in that process and they kind of actually were the ones who directed me towards production. Um, and knocked on NPC's door and as soon as I walked in I was like this is where it's supposed to be, this is, this is where I belong. Um, and I spent a year in the layout department. So um, I got some really great exposure to the pipeline um, and obviously to the way that NPC works. And layouts were a technical department. I really enjoyed it. I'm quite a creative person outside of work. And I really thought that being in a creative environment, which NPC is hugely creative, but also we've got some amazingly technical um, parts of the job as well. And I actually found that that was the side that I gravitated towards. That sort of, um, I was amazed at how technically in-depth you can get into, into some of these disciplines. So, I spent a year um, really coming to understand the pipeline and understanding my role as a coordinator. And then I was fortunate enough to move out to London to start working on the Jungle Book in the wonderful asset department. Um, so for over a year I lived and breathed trees and plants um, and again got really stuck into, into in a particular department. Um, and I think that really prepared me and rounded out my knowledge about the effects. And obviously during that time on the show I got to, um, my relationships obviously developed, I became much more comfortable in my role and decided to transition over into show, which some people when they begin they go straight into show and, and that's great, some people start off in department, it really depends what you, what you want and how you feel about it. Um, so by the time I moved into show I felt like I was, it was what I wanted to do, I wanted to try something different. And I went on to Suicide Squad, which was a lot of fun. It was a nice and small show, so I got a bit of a taste of it. And then um, moved on to Herschel, which, so Pirates of the Caribbean 5, that was probably the most challenging project to date, I think, because um, we see big scale, um, big team, tough deliveries, but I think it was, ultimately, it was probably my favourite, well, I mean, John, I can't, I can't decide, I shouldn't say the word favourite, but um, that was probably my biggest test, I would say, because, um, you know, I moved away sort of from the, the detail side of things and had to learn how to be a bit of, um, you know, practice managing and practice different kinds of skills. So I feel in my experience in BC, I've been so lucky to have such a different array of, of things to get stuck into. and. Um, Obviously, I've, I've mentioned already how much I enjoy the technical side of things. So there's always something to learn, always something to um, something new to understand. Um, and because of how Herschel went and how much I enjoyed that project, I moved into the CPM role. And so that's it's um, it's different, it's challenging, and it's exciting. Um, and I feel like this is my I'm going into my fourth year in PC. So. Um, 
yeah, I've, I've, I've really enjoyed how, much, how many opportunities I've had. And, um, you know, some of it is obviously obviously giving you the opportunities, but um, I think if you're the kind of person who really gets stuck in, if you see an op if something opens up or you see an opportunity, you know, you dive into it and you, you get stuck in. And I think that's ultimately how you um, come to understand visual effects more and, and progress and that kind of thing. So I've been in the CPM role since the beginning of January and I really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, that's been... Just, just to say sorry, um, you're sending through a few questions are there in Internet Lab. Do feel free to um, ask anything that we may not cover off in the presentation and we'll run through those at the end of the presentation. A couple of things to mention. Um, the email of the, the talent team here is talent at mpc.joel. So if there's any questions that come up after the presentation or maybe you think later on I should have asked this or I'd like to know that, do feel free to email us. And all the roles that are available at MPC are um, listed on our website, which is www.mpc.jobs. So do have a look on there and see what might be um, appropriate to apply for. But as I say, do keep um, your questions coming through. There's quite a few come through already and um, we'll run through those at the end. Um, I think one thing is to tag back on to what Liv was saying. Sometimes when you're here, I say NPC gene, um, and it's not that you have to be a specific type of person to fit into NPC, but as Liv was saying, if you're somebody who not just only wants to challenge yourself, but also wants to be challenged by the situations you're in, I think it can be really complemented here. We find that some of our strongest performers, for example, are those that are kind of just limited by the show they're on, or the department they're in, or the role at the time, for example. It's those that are willing to wear multiple hats, get stuck in, look at how to make things better and improve. Um, we're not just agile as a company, but also as a team. We have a lot of proprietary software, not just for the artists, but also for production. A lot of the tools we use are built by a team here, so we can invest back in them. It's not just a case we have to use what's given to us. We are constantly looking at, okay, we are about to embark on this show. Lion King, for example, we look at how to plan it, how to structure it, how do we need to change our tools to work better for us, knowing that we're about to embark on a full CG show with a ginormous shot count. So it's, it's important that we also have people that are passionate um, about improving too because we can invest back in our teams and we invest back in our tools as well. And it's, yeah, I find those people that are happy to get stuck in and wear the multiple hats and aren't afraid to try something even if they're unsure. I think a lot of the times people look for the job description or the box that they need to fit in, tell me what I need to do and what my day-to-day -day is. A lot of the time the best people that perform really strongly and move up quite quickly through the company are those that just work out in the situation what's needed. Um, seeing the gaps, knowing just jump in and fill them, don't wait for someone necessarily to tell you that something needs to be done. I always stick by the motto, if someone asks you for something it's probably because it's too late because it needed to be done by that point. So it's always about just always thinking on your, your feet and reading off the, the room and the environment you're in and your team in terms of what their needs are and being able to supplement that and support them as well. Yeah, people who can be calm in the chaos. Yeah, that's um, with, a with, a, with a smile. Yeah, and I think um, <laughs> being uh, positive and always seeing the, the, the um, opportunity in everything is, is a really important way to look at things as well because when, when situations are stressful or if a situation is high pressured, um, those are opportunities to learn and to grow. And if you get through that and you come out on the other side, then you're going to be stronger and able to handle something even better and with more ease the next time you encounter the same the same problem. Um, so yeah, I guess resilience is a really key that history. Yeah. yeah, resilience for sure because yeah, it, it's not always easy. We we do work very hard and um, we do that because we're passionate about what we do and because you feed off the passion that the artists have as well. And it's important to be resilient because, yeah, not everyone is going to be super friendly all the time. Not everyone is going to do it with a smile on their face, but it's remembering that a lot of the time it's not personal. Um, when someone's under pressure or sometimes even external influences, nobody knows what's going on at home or in someone's personal life. It's just remembering to be professional in the moment and it's not reflecting on you. It's just sometimes a situation. So we, we do work with our teams to build resilience as well and having the right tools, like as I was talking about delegation framework training that we do and pressure training and things like that, it's making sure that if you are in any of those situations, you feel like you have the right tools available to 
front them head on or if not you have your department manager, show manager, Liv, me, there's plenty of people to support there. Um, that's one thing I really love about NPCs, the structure we have here in production, that you are never just left there with no one to talk to. There's lots of support and people around, so if you ever feel uncertain about something, if you have a question, if you just want to find out more about something, we always have open door policies and want to encourage our team just to reach out because we're here to help and support as well. So um, I have a feeling this might be our last slide, um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about life at NPC. Um, if you've been at another VFX facility or if you're new to VFX, I think some of the things we do here are quite cool and I like chatting about it as well because they're great. Um, we do monthlies, so um, once a month in every location, the general manager will speak to everyone who can join monthlies. Um, it's usually a Friday at 5, which also coincides with beer o'clock, handily enough. <laughs> um, and monthlies are usually the uh, theme, so obviously beer o'clock happens every Friday at 5 p.m. We stop the fridges with beer and a few other treats. Um, so everyone is encouraged to go to the kitchen, chat to different departments and different people, and um, start to kind of enjoy the weekend a little bit as well and monthlies is then once a month we then kind of put a spin on it a bit we have a theme we then have more treats um, available as I say the general manager will then present to the room um, whether it's in the kitchen or screening room for example um, does them kind of show updates not just for London but also globally so it's a great way to find out what's happening in the company um, they'll talk through any shows that are delivered any kind of client feedback which we recently had what's happening um, in the world. Then what we do is employee of the month. So every month leads we have an employee of the month. So the head of department will come to the front and give a little speech about who the employee is. And uh, then they get a golden lanyard, which is beautiful, and um, a chance to wear a lovely outfit too. And um, they will be employee of the month. And then we do a show reel as well. Sometimes we specialize on a show. Sometimes we specialize on a department. And then we showcase some of the work that that's, that has happened. Um, we also show trailers, for example, finals, real. Um, it's just a chance to see all the wonderful work on the big screen. And uh, I always think it's a brilliant thing to go to. Um, we do crew forums here as well and department meetings. So it's important that we, because we are a big company, um, we always want to make sure that everyone knows where we're going in terms of the company and they have chances to be back and improve. A lot of the reason why Life at NPC is good is due to engagement and it's important that all the artists and everyone out on the floor engages with NPC and can also feed back on anything um, that they have ideas about. Um, we do kind of events and socials, so um, we have lots of clubs that people um, want to set up themselves, for example, if they have any skills or talent that they might want to kind of share. Um, we also do some more well-being stuff too. Um, we have stretching club, for example. We do free massages. Um, it's important that we look after the well-being of everyone, um, not only just in terms of clubs and societies, but also in terms of overtime management, as I've mentioned before. Um, we do uh, sometimes have kind of pressures in uh, show deliveries and we as a central team, uh, we have overtime reports so we are always monitoring and aware of what hours people are working, not so that we can kind of clamp down and be really nitpicky, it's more a sense that we can support, so HR can step in and see if there's a problem we need to help with or see if someone's been overburdened but might, might not have said something. It's important for us to be supporting our teams and it's another kind of tool we have in place just to make sure that we're aware of what's going on on the floor and that we can step in if needs to be and help support. Um, and then as we mentioned before, training at uh, NPC University I think is brilliant. I think it's a really exciting way to share training with everyone and the fact that it's all bite-sized courses that you can read and track and do quizzes at the end, it just shows a bit better what training you have done because sometimes you want to bring that to your appraisal for example and show your HOD, look at the training I've done, I think I'm ready for a new challenge or a different type of show or a next step for example. Um, but I think it's really great all the engaging things we have at NPC, we have an internal engagement team, um, internal comms as well to communicate out to everybody um, so we can kind of share any cool news that's happening, any trailers, any updates um, from the MD for example and also making sure that we have some awesome clubs running as well. So lots going on, oh, yeah. lots and lots. And work too. I think that's um, <laughs> the last slide that we had. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, stop sharing the screen. Okay. And maybe just run through some of the questions that we've been getting through. I think maybe, uh, first of all, it might be worth just running through 
what we're hiring for at the minute? Yeah. So um, in terms of positions, obviously ramping up for Nike, we also have Dumbo, as I mentioned. Um, we will be crewing up both department and show side, more department side at the moment. So the more immediate departments we will be hiring for is coordinated positions within, for example, layout, animation, tech anim. Those roles will be um, kind of starting towards the end of the summer a little bit as well. Um, and then next year we'll definitely be looking towards the uh, later departments like lighting, DMP, for example, as well, and effects, um, and department side as well. Show side, we will have a couple of show coordinator uh, positions available. I would say between department and show, obviously because department you're focusing on a single element of the pipeline, it's a good chance to learn if you're new to VFX. Um, show side, we usually, if you're brand new to VFX, we usually try and line you up with the department side opportunity first and then look at potentially moving you across to a show once you've got exposure within the pipeline. Um, and then, yeah, show side, um, we will probably have more opportunities next year for those roles. Cool. And um, so a couple of questions that are coming through. We've had quite a few so far. If, we don't, if we're not able to get through them all, do feel free to drop us a line at talent at mbc.jobs. I'll just pick out a few to run through. Leslie is a US citizen. He's he or she, I'm not sure. Uh, Leslie, yeah. Leslie, one of those Can we both? names. Yeah. yeah. So, well, Leslie wants to know um, in terms of the runner to production transition, is that something that's unique to London or is that across the whole portfolio of studios? That's across um, all sites. Uh, not Bangalore or LA, but that is for uh, Montreal and Vancouver. Okay, and, and I think uh, they're based in, in uh, LA. Mm -hmm. Should they have, is LA uh, power so as well? Or? LA is a kind of hybrid between our film and advertising studios. Um, the film presence in LA is smaller. Um, we have just recently moved some of the new business teams, for example, out there. Um, in terms of LA positions, there wouldn't be as many. I know LA is a beautiful place to live, um, but I would say if you're looking for kind of positions, I, I'd look towards Vancouver, Montreal side instead. Okay, and Blasis is also from the US, and you, you mentioned a little bit earlier about the mobility between um, different countries, but yeah. there's also restrictions on that as well. So, yeah. uh, is, is that to do with the level that you're at in order to get, if someone wants to be, if someone was a US citizen wanted to work in the UK, mm -hmm. they couldn't come over to coordinator could they, they need to come to work. It, it depends on what, it, on what visa, so I believe if you're under the age of 30, there's a youth yeah. mobility visa, sure. yeah. which has less restrictions, but it requires the individual themselves to source it and fund it, however, if we were to go through a tier 5 visa, um, then it requires sponsorship, and if it requires sponsorship, then yes, you have to be at a manager level and earning yeah. a certain salary. Okay. And uh, you mentioned about the advertising base in LA. So, um, for people who maybe don't know, that MPC um, split between MPC film and MPC advertising. Is there mobility in production between the two of those? Um, it's not impossible. So, we have one of our PAs, for example, in the team, came over from the advertising runner team. Um, it definitely does not. It's not that it never happens, um, it's just more the fact that obviously I hire specifically for NPC Film um, and NPC Advertising have their own team that hire and source talent there. Um, obviously if people are interested, we, we do chat and we, we can follow up and, and see if there's any opportunities that are suitable. So yeah, it's not that it, it happens all the time, but it's not an impossibility. Okay. And um, Liv uh, Schnubas. I want to know in terms of your role, what you find challenging about that? Um, I would say one of the challenging aspects of being CPM is being able to effectively give my time to everybody in the team equally. So obviously with a team of 50, um, that's, that's a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of team. So that's really up to me to kind of decide how I, um, how I meet with everybody and I've been strategizing myself about how I approach that. So sometimes I meet with people in small groups, Sometimes people come to me to have one-to-ones or I'll seek them out, it really depends. But I would, I wish I could give my time to everybody all the time. But I would say that that's a big um, challenge. I, I guess sometimes an area uh, that that's challenging is people might have only come to you if they're having a bad day. Mm. So I have to um, you know, really uh, stay positive and, and be encouraging and supportive. And just acknowledge that you know sometimes people are just having a bad day, and just want to have a chat, and that's okay. 
Um, but if you have five people who are having a, a tricky day, you're going to see five people who, who may not be. Um, and that, that, can be, that can be tricky, but at the end of the day, that makes me happy to know that the team's comfortable to come to me and that um, I try and keep things as open and as honest as possible, and I think that that's, that's super important. Um, sometimes, you know, if you've, in, in, in central production, your job can be very varied and um, lots, lots of variety. So, for example, if a department manager's out for a period of time for any kind of reason, or if a show is uh, struggling because maybe their deliveries, um, tight deliveries, tight turnarounds, and um, I'll just go in and help sort of be extra support, um, conflict, conflict resolution. So you've kind of got to be a jack of all trades. And again, I think it comes back to managing time effectively. That's probably what I'm getting at actually, is managing your time the most effectively. And um, basically each day I have to decide what I think is the most important thing. And so that's going to be different every single day. So that I would say is the most challenging. Cool. And of all the applications that come through, Siobhan, what, what, how does somebody stand out? Do you look at their experience or um, do you look at uh, you know, how they present themselves on paper or what, what are the sort of things that you know, would, would help somebody stand out when they're applying? Like, for example, mm -hmm. the people that come over from other industries, presumably there was something about their skills and experience, that, although they weren't directly um, skilled or they hadn't got experience with VFX, there was still someone who wanted to come in and join the team. Funny enough, um, I always have an eye out for somebody who's been in retail, sales, or customer service. Um, personally, for me, especially kind of as I was growing up, teenager at university, always having some kind of Saturday, Sunday retail job, um, I found that going through that was sometimes the or in hindsight, the best training I could have ever really had for probably any career because when you're having to be customer focused and sometimes with difficult customers, but obviously you still have to remain professional and you're in that direct moment face to face, you can't obviously hide, run away or scream. Um, I think it builds really strong resilience and also an understanding of how to manage people's personalities and also how to manage yourself within pressure. So it, it's not just a case that I need every CV to say retail or something like yeah. that, but I think it, it's a showcase of how you've been able to manage different teams and people and display those soft skills that we would really be looking for. Um, obviously a beautiful CV, um, ideally one page, not too many kind of text, graphics, and things that are gonna distract you off the page. Um, usually simple and clean is best. Um, and then, yeah, it's being able to show that in your experience, like I say, because we have hired people that don't have direct experience, I think it's in your CV just showing why and you would be and how you would be able to transfer over into this industry, and also just showing your passion bit as, as well. I think is important. I'm interested in seeing um, what people's volunteering experience is because, especially when I was at uni, um, you know, if you get a degree. Um, in a particular area, you kind of in competition with everybody else who has the same degree as you. And especially in production, as we've said, there are lots of different types of industries that you can come from. So I think the way that you spend time outside of work, um, I'm not saying necessarily hobbies, but things that you have volunteered in. So different groups, if you're into photography, are you, are you actively pursuing those things? Are you actively trying to upskill yourself? What are you doing that's going to separate you from the rest of the people that have done the same degree as you? Or been to the same school as you, and I think that kind of gives some indicators to personality as well. That shows good. drive. As well. It shows drive, and it just shows that you're willing to go beyond ju um, not just getting a degree. Obviously, getting a degree is huge and and difficult in itself. But obviously, um, your interest in, in we how you kind of apply that outside in the real world is is really important. It's something that I look look at on a CV. Cool. Well, that was a question from Kieran Nolan Jones. Um, we mentioned degree quite a lot mm -hmm. already. Uh, is it a prerequisite to getting a job in no, production? Oh, there's a few questions coming through about, you know, in terms of the um, the things you look at again for when you look to hire somebody. You know, somebody's been in education for a long time. Is that a good thing or? It varies. I think it depends. Yeah, I think it depends on what you've been studying. Um, we've had uh, people that are now show managers that started as runners and came straight from school and never went to university. Um, but then again, Liv and I, myself both did. It, it varies. I don't, it's definitely not a prerequisite. I think it's more the fact that 
you went to university because as Liv was saying, you're trying to upskill, you're trying to push yourself, whether you did or you didn't, it's all about that drive and that passion. You might not necessarily have gone to university, but you might have done a few kind of weekend or evening courses, or you've done other things to try and push your skills and uh, learn new things as well. So no, I, I don't think it's, it's necessary. Um, I think it's all just about how you display how driven you are to improve yourself and do well at what you do. And I don't really think there's necessarily a, a production focused degree in a way. It doesn't exist. So like, I, I did um, a Bachelor of Communication, so that was very broad and, and focused on the media and different things like that. But in my first year of uh, um, working at NPC, I think I learned more. And, and, I, and I mean, more about film more about film and the, and the realities of actually being in the industry because you can obviously practice, you can write essays, you can watch movies, you can analyse them, but until you're actually in the industry and you're doing the day-to-day -day in production, it's, it is quite different and so I don't really think there's a huge amount that uni can actually prepare you for in the way of the production skills themselves. As you were saying, a lot of it is soft skills. Um, it's things like resilience and, um, and positive energy, all these kinds of things that Yes, you can practice those things while you're at uni, um, but ultimately, some of that is quite innate. Cool. Um, Wilson wants to know, is the New York, New York office just advertising? Yes, Wilson it is. Uh, someone I've dealt with. Um, another thing that's um, come up is, is just to do with the entry level roles, because mm -hmm. MPC is pretty different to the other studios where you might end up going from a runner into an artistic role. So, you know, in terms of trying to get into those artistic roles, the, op the options for those guys. Okay, um, if you're looking, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, I suppose it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of we, we would hire people straight onto the studio floor as a junior, really, I suppose. Yeah, or yeah. we do have internships as well, yeah. the summer or internships, yeah. um, but, or academies. And the academy in Canada. Yeah. So there's, there's definitely options, yeah, we've got uh, academies out in Canada where um, people can go to learn new skills and you were part of the academy for a certain amount of time and then the view is to then move you across show side so you start actually joining a department then. Um, sometimes yes, depending on your background, you're hired into a junior role um, or you can join, um, I think for students they can do potentially a summer internship for a few months as well. Yeah, yeah we've got a eight week internship that runs um, from July to August and uh, we're just currently hiring for that so applications for that are not closed but for next year, they normally close around March time, so if it's something you're interested in, do uh, keep an eye on the website for more more details on that. Um, just to clarify on uh, something we talked about earlier, MBC University is an internal training um, uh, initiative for staff who join MPC. We're very committed to training here in terms of people um, and our artists and production uh, guys sort of, uh, improving their own skill set. So MPC University is different from MPC Academy. MPC Academy is our entry level program in Canada for three or four different disciplines where it's like it's like a bridging between uni and working on the studio floor. It's a 12 week intensive training program which is um, separate to MPC University. MPC University is something that's only available to staff who are, who are already at, at MPC. Um, so in terms of, in ter again, um, talking about this transfer transferability mm -hmm. between Different uh, different industries. If someone has worked themselves up to um, from Vanessa, uh, like a mid-level um, production role in a creative agency, maybe not working at VFX. How long does it take to to get to that level in um, VFX? It varies. I mean, we've hired people that haven't. So yeah, we've hired people before that haven't been directly from VFX into manager roles. So again, even for more higher roles within the company. It's not specifically for VFX. I think with, with management, it's definitely, it's, especially if you're a department manager, for example, it's slightly different if you're a show manager because a show manager, you are responsible for globally scheduling however many shots, usually around 1,000. That's kind of sometimes a rough average that we work on here. Um, so it's important definitely for show manager roles to ensure that it comes with VFX experience and the pipeline knowledge. But department manager side, because you are focused on managing the team of artists and um, supporting an HOD, uh, head of department too, um, we can look for skill sets of people that have worked with teams, large teams before, managed teams before, again, might be in TV, broadcast, more advertising based, um, somebody who has displayed an ability to 
um, yeah, juggle those different team sizes, uh, manage uh, different disciplines as well. Um, obviously, if you're a department manager, for example, for animation, you will not be an animator and you may have never worked in animation before, but it's being able to be in tune with artists, their needs, and be able as a department manager to support them. And not only that, it's supporting the coordination team because you are then responsible as well for working alongside us in managing a team of maybe four coordinators and a PA, for example, and ensuring their schedules are up to date and they're following MPC processes and protocol. So it, it's important that they also feel like they can go through the steep learning curve of getting their head around the effects and then being able to support the team in that way. And in terms of in terms of the, the, the scope of the department uh, role versus the show role, is, is there a lot of sort of budget management or is it more about people management and it's time management? It's definitely more about people and time. So we have producers obviously here as well. Um, producers are the finance kings and um, I'm very happy to leave it with them. <laughs> so we, um, they will work closely with our finance team. They are responsible for um, knowing everything about the budget, the finance, uh, working with the clients on contracts and all the nitty gritty in terms of that. Myself, Liv, our show managers, our resource managers, it all comes down, uh, sorry, our department managers, all comes down to resource. It very much comes down to people and time and seats and schedules um, as opposed to monetary values. Cool. Um, so I think maybe we should think about wrapping up in the next couple of minutes. So in terms of a piece of advice you give anyone thinking about applying for a role in production with, with NPC, uh -huh. um, Presumably you'd advise them to do it. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, you know, um, what, what, would, you know what, what would you say in terms of a good reason to, to come and work here in, in, in that role? Um, that team? I think if you are looking for a company that you will see progression in, a company, it, I think we're at a, a, we're in a day and age now where it's a lot more common for people to jump around, try different industries, try different companies. And although that does still happen within DFX, we are very passionate about bringing people in that see a five-year, ten-year plan, for example, here within the company. I'd say if you're interested in applying, it's also being interested in knowing that VFX is that career path for you because we do invest so much in every new starter. It's important that we're investing in the right people and people that will be hardworking, diligent and resilient to the different stresses that do happen day to day and power through as well. It can be very easy when the first brick wall or the first difficult delivery kind of is there in front of you to kind of push through, but it's knowing that if you do push, push through, you have two people fighting for you and giving you the opportunities to ensure that you do have career progression and then you do get exposed to examples of senior management or producers or different people in the company so that you are constantly growing and progressing. Um, I'd say kind of have a think in terms of that. I think it's quite easy sometimes for people just to see it as a job and just apply for that specific job. Whereas we're very engaged in ensuring that the job ultimately leads to a career because um, we find that the strongest people in the team are those who are also career driven at NPC because they are building those relationships for a longer term goal. Cool. Um, yeah. No, I think you've pretty, yeah. much, I think you've pretty uh, much nailed it. Basically, if you, if you love film and you're passionate about uh, challenging yourself, I would say that that's the main thing, then, then absolutely you should apply. Um, if you're ambitious and creative, if you, uh, yeah, if you love film, and if you love working with people, I think that's... Yeah, I, I think it's can see a balance, obviously. It's a massively people-focused, people-facing yeah. job, and if you like dealing with a wide variety of personalities and traits and quirks, um, in, in this, then this is the place for you. But. And um, just a final couple of questions coming through. Uh, I think it's just, just worth recapping on talents at mpc.jobs. You had a few questions through about artist roles and FX Academy and bits and pieces like that, which we're not going to cover off tonight, but if you want to send them through to the talent team, the right person will pick them up. Uh, Lathma is curious to know about after graduation, is, is it something that someone should look to jump into straight away or is it, would it be frowned upon if somebody went travelling or sat in a dark room for 12 months before coming to, to work? I, to say? <laughs> I travel a lot. I mean, I, took, I finished uni and then I spent some time figuring it out. I really thought about it and made sure that it was the right move for me because, with, and, and I think that's 
the right thing to do, whether or not you're moving countries. Um, to find people who already work in the industry and have conversations with them. Reach out, send an email and say, hey, what is your job actually like? What, what is a, a classical day involved? Um, and I think, yeah, you don't, you can have been travelling for five years. I mean, I'm sure you would have learned a lot on the way. So that's going to make you a Brazilian person. So um, I don't think it's absolutely necessary to, to follow one. There's, there's no set path. I, I think it's whatever you as an individual feel you want to experience as well. Um, I, I know it's tricky when you're at uni and post-uni, what do you want to do, what do you want to do next? I think it's kind of just important that you take a moment to, to think about what you might want to achieve before embarking on a career as well, because also you don't want to spend the time investing in something that you then feel you need a break from down the line. Um, so it's definitely not necessarily something that you will be able to be proud, proud upon. Okay, I think, um, Leslie, you sent through quite a, quite a tricky question, which I'm not going to answer. It's, so I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, we've got um, a big show going through at the minute called uh, The Lion King, which is sort of following on from our work in the Jungle Book. And yeah, visual effects, the kind of landscape's changing a little bit in that um, I think the Lion King is going to be quite an unusual one that there might not be a lot of filmed elements to that. Yeah, I, I think it's, believe me, it's um, a question we have all spoken about because obviously if there's no people, if there's no plates, you're like, yeah, that's feature animation, right? But I think what makes it still VFX and what makes it a live action film is the quality we are aiming to achieve is photo real, um, not just Jungle Book level, but more. Um, feature animation, obviously, kind of studios like Pixar, for example, they have a certain edge um, and stylized work, whereas what we are trying to do is make something that looks as if it was actually really filmed and captured. Um, so as much as it kind of is feature animation, because there's nothing plain human in it, um, the fact that we are pushing for a photo real finish still keeps it visual effects, which is combining the virtual with the real all in one. And I suppose it just highlights uh, how things are really moving on, what an innovative Massively. industry it is that we, we, we don't even know what to refer to the stuff that we're working <laughs> Technology on. Technology is amazing. Well, and I think as well, it, it keeps a job. I mean, obviously, although I've only been here three years, um, obviously now almost five years within VFX, and it is a job that doesn't get old. And I know, yeah, yeah I know when I was kind of working. Uh, in retail or when I was at university, I'm like, I don't want to be in a run-of-the-mill job where every day feels identical because ultimately then it can get a bit dull. Um, here it's challenging. Yeah, sometimes you want to kind of just put this, the stop sign and be like, can it stay the same for a day? But then at the same time, it means that you're evolving, everyone else is evolving, and you're involved in some really passionate and creative conversations of people being like, how do we do this? What do we build? How should we approach it? How can we do it? How can we make it better? What technology can we use? What can we try and do that will push boundaries even further? And I think it's nice that after doing something like Jungle Book, there really is no limits because it's not just a case of, oh yeah, let's do that again. It's a case of, no, let's do it even better. And, and it, not just for Lion King, for example, I know some of the work we've been doing on Salutrian um, is absolutely incredible. And some of the creature work there is some of the best, again, we've done thus far. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> catch my own breath then. Um, in terms of Herschel as well, Pyrus, the sheer amount of water we did, so much water. Um, and brand new technologies and things that have never been done before, um, it just makes it such an interesting industry to be part of because, yeah, you're not approaching everything just with a let's do it again point of view. It's a fantastic way to wrap up. So just, just to say, um, talent at npc.jobs, if you've got any questions that we haven't covered off uh, in this session, and all the jobs are available on our website, www.npc.jobs. Thank you to Siobhan and thank you to Liv for spending the time tonight to um, tell everyone out there a little bit more about production at MPC. And um, yeah, it was a useful session, and see you next time. Thanks, Dad. Cheers, bye.